Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and today we're going to do a unboxing of the brand new Beetle and Grimm's fan... Brand new Beetle and Grimm's Fudelier. God. Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and today we're going to do a brand new unboxing of Beetle and Grimm's Fandelier. Still wrong. Hey team, today we're looking at Fandelver. That's right. Is that right? Hey team, today we're looking at Fidelver. That's still wrong? Can someone just put it on a card? You know, I need like the spelling, like like how you would say it. Ah, Fandelver. That's what I said. Join the team. Oh, little wickets here, huh? I got this little guy down here. Oh, we got a little we got a little wickster up here, huh? Little wicket came to came to do an unboxing today too. Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and we're going to take a look at Beetle and Grimm's brand new box set, Fandelver. This is the legendary edition. Now, they do these box sets in a number of different ways. If you've been watching the channel over the years, uh, we've covered almost every box set they've ever come out with, except for the very first one, I believe. Um, but they do these in a number of different ways. All right, you will notice that my box does come with a code on the side, 18332. I can't tell you what that means, but it's pretty special. They have them in silver and legendary and gold, platinum. Uh, they've, they've done a number of different types of boxes. Sometimes they even theme the boxes like they did with the Dragonlance to something that's more in tune with that campaign. Like the Dragonlance was the steel edition versus like a silver edition. So it's really, really cool how they do these. And... Usually when you get the Legendary or the Platinum or some of the higher level boxes, they are going to come with some different little uh, add-ons and types of things that are, that are you know, have a little bit of that higher kind of quality touch that are put in, as we'll see with this one. That's the first time I've seen something like this. We're going to take a look at that in a minute, but it does look pretty cool. It's a little, little leather-esque type um, uh, portfolio type thing. It's definitely not made you know from leather, but it's, it's supposed to kind of look and feel uh, like that. And then you've got the uh, the main box here, which is a nice big box. Now, I have kind of restricted myself from uh, looking at a lot of these things uh, online. I kind of like to get my own, um, you know, impression as I open this up. I'll set this down here to the side, and we'll start going through. Now, I do know that this little folio here is where they've kind of packaged all of i think all of like the maps and different types of things are in here so we'll take a look at this first you'll be able to see this stuff on the side by side head cam well not a head cam <laughs> okay this is stamped right on the uh right here it says dungeons and dragons it's nice kind of stamped in and on the back there's a really nice uh image there it's stamped on the back of that as well so we'll open this up. It's not a, um, well, yes, it is. It is a magnet. It's a magnet kind of little, little clip apparatus there to keep it, to keep it closed. Uh, and then inside we've got all kinds of stuff. So there is, um, it is, I believe it is one big pocket. I don't know that there's like a divider that's in there. I don't see that there is. It looks like it's, it's one big pocket and there's a number of things that are in here. Okay. Uh, so we'll start kind of getting those things out and on the table. Uh, this one here is going to be probably the nicest thing in there. It's like a big canvas map. It's pretty awesome. Um, we do have uh, paper maps here. There is uh, sort of their coded um, kind of handout type maps that are in here for all the different uh, different types of areas. And on the back, it usually says like, notes where you can kind of scribble in your notes so that's pretty cool i do like how they're packaging this uh all in together as he and continues to dig through the maps he becomes lost in himself lost in the never winter wood fairly sure no one ever heard of him again giant maps that they that they include now interesting this one has a little bit of a different look in comparison to some of their maps this from a review perspective um it's a little bit more i hate to use the word plain but it's but 
in 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 let's let's see how how some of the other maps look. There may be there may be a reason for that as we kind of get in here a little bit deep. All of these are are right on kind of for the same look that they have in most most of their maps. The Beetle and Grim maps are uh, usually pretty cool. Sometimes they are maps that are taken right out of kind of the D and D adventure in the book, um, and then sometimes they're things that they actually commission some custom artwork and whatnot for. So you know, looking pretty cool. They're just your standard sort of battle maps of of the area that you're going to be going through, and maps that you'll need as you get into the the various different parts of the adventure uh, that we call Fandelver. Which, I'm a big fan of that uh, adventure. Um, let's look at this map here. I'm a big fan of that one. So th this box set definitely holds uh, a special place for me. I think it is definitely one that a lot of people are going to like. Uh, so I love that they gave this one the legendary treatment. Okay, these maps are all double-sided as well. So you're going to get a ton of maps. Uh, there's a decent amount here that's included in just this uh, folio, all right? So that's everything that's there. Here's this canvas map that's really cool. I don't know, I can't remember. I think they did, did they do a canvas map of the Barovia? That, I think that was like a different material, almost like a like a canvas or, or something, if I remember correctly. Um, but this one here is a really thick, like true, canvas material with kind of a wax coating on the top and i do really like this look at the net never winter wood ah oh, this is so cool this is something that i definitely would want to probably frame and hang on the wall or something but this this is just amazing i really love the quality of this and i'm a big fan in being able to to lay something like this out on the table for for players and kind of put like like you know, different coins or maybe things they include to kind of, you don't really need to, but just thematically like it's holding it down on the table. And then you kind of have that overview map that's sort of always out as you're playing, just as like a visual representation of kind of the area that you're in. And then I like to do this thing where it's like, oh, now we're zooming in to like this area right here. And then you grab a map and you sort of lay it out on top of it. And then the players can kind of go through and do their thing. And then it's like, okay, now we'll zoom back out, right? And we're back on the road or we're back on, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> I kind of, I really like that from a visual concept. Um, that's, that's really nice. This is a great, great addition and a great piece of this box set. That's all that's in the folio here. Now you can obviously use this folio to continue to store all your maps. You can use it to put your notes. There's lots of different things you can use that folio for, all right? Let's go ahead and get into the Shattered Obelisk is what the name of this one is. It is, again, a legendary edition. I do love the look of the box. You know, it's got that, you know, all the, like, the writing, and it's got the, it's got the obelisk here, and the green, that bright green with that gray really jumps out. There is some stuff on the back as well, but it's just sort of some different symbols and whatnot that's kind of ghosted into the side of it. But I really like, and it's cool, like, on one side, you've got the English, the, the name, and then on the other side, you've got... Um, the the special kind of runic letters here that you have on this side. So really good design to the box. They've always done a good job, I think, with the designs of these boxes. These are all going to follow a very similar format. We're going to start off here with our intro, Dear Adventurer, where all the founders kind of give you a little personal thank you. And we're going to see what's going to be included in this box. So we will hit that really quick. Um, we're going to have our chapter, our chapterlet, uh, as I like to call them, the little booklets that they create that where they take the actual D&D book and then they break it down into bite-sized chunks, which is nice. Battle maps, there are 32 battle maps of key dungeons that are included in this box set. You've got overall area maps. That's kind of like the big, you know, here that we have. You have annotated dungeon maps. They did include a custom DM screen for this one. I really, really love their custom DM screens, so that's you're going to find that in this box set. In-world handouts, there's a ton of in-world handouts and bonus art. There is minis, so there are actually painted minis that are included in this legendary set that we're going to find in this box. 
There's faction pins. That's going to get into kind of their jewelry and their various different things they create for these box sets. Wicket, don't, don't eat the, don't eat the Beetle and Grimm's box. No, don't eat that. Okay, we're going to have encounter cards. There's a ton of those, 60 of those. Magic item cards, that's a newer thing that I thought was pretty cool. They've, they've added over the last few boxes. Artwork pulled from the book. You're going to have bonus encounters, which is nice. That's something they create. It's all of theirs. It's not something that you can get anywhere else. It's their own little bonus side adventures and one, you could call them little one shots. There's going to be a number of DM aids. There's a story tracker, a player story tracker, character backgrounds, an element cheat sheet. Uh, and then they are including a coin of completion as well in this box, which is something that is they started to add in for the boxes where you have a single coin of completion that once the box is complete, then you have this coin of completion, right? Which is kind of cool. I mean, there's only one of them, so it isn't like you can give each one of your players one of those coins, but it is like a neat little thing to have where the DM could for... Wicket! It is kind of a cool thing that the DMs could could have and as you get different box sets you could put one of those coin you could just collect your coin of completions maybe like in a little padded frame or something i think would be pretty cool right this is something that um you know you can kind of have as you go through those campaigns All right that's going to be everything that we're going to get in the box so we'll quickly kind of go through and we'll look um at the different various items so here's the tales from the warehouse so this is going to be you know they're included uh little one shots that they've created and they they have brought in some outside writers um as well so it's not always just the the founders that do this sometimes they do bring in some other folks as well uh to create some of these uh some of these little one shots for the players so that's something that's kind of neat kind of interesting here's going to be a number of handouts they're all put here in this little um, cellophane uh, wrapper these are going to be uh, very similar to what we see now what i'm going to do just from a review perspective is i'm going to take a look at what um <clears throat> what these look like okay uh, because I will say from a review perspective, just kind of over the years, these have started to get a little bit more uh, standard. I mean, they're still, I want to be fair, they're still quite a bit different, okay? But when I think back to the Salt Marsh and, and, and back in those days, some of these paper items were significantly different. Uh, they literally looked like they were physically ripping the pages before they were packaging them. I don't, I don't know if they were or not, but some of it, there, there is definitely been some change over the years, and I get it just from a cost and production perspective. They are making a lot more of these box sets nowadays than they would have been doing four or five years ago. So um, I can definitely understand that just from a production perspective. But these are still very unique and different. Like, look at this one, how it's all cut out, and it, it's its edges are a little bit flanged, like it's sort of been toasted. You know, that's, that's pretty awesome. You know, these pages are going to be the same, but then something like this is going to be completely different. It's a different piece of paper. It's a different feel. Uh, it's even probably got a different... It's got a different smell. I mean, everything about it is different. So... So just so you know, if you're watching this video and you've been getting these boxes for years and years, they are still giving you very high quality handouts and pieces of paper that are significantly different. But, you know, to be fair, there there is some difference. It was probably a little bit broader on the scale back in the day than, than where it is now. I don't know. Some may disagree with that, but um, these have to be kind of fair uh, review unboxing and videos as well. So... Um, so that's that. Okay, Legendary Edition Elements. Okay, so this is part of the DM, DM's Quick Reference Guide. Okay, so this is kind of cool. So this is one of the little DM tools. So you can kind of quick reference through all the materials and the stuff that's included in each one of the chapters. These little handouts are very handy to have kind of behind your DM screen as you're, as you're going through that. So it looks like they've also included some of the... Okay, here's the character creation tools. Here's the story tracker and the player notes tracker so that's kind of cool as well um this is something that i don't know that i've seen in the past this little story tracker this is a really handy little thing and also the player notes 
that's also really handy to be able to, to make those notes and track that um, behind the scene as the DM to be able to kind of remember where things are. Okay, and then we got a couple. Um, they included two. I don't know if that was a mistake uh, or if they wanted two there for extra stability. But um, So what you're going to find here is the DM, uh, uh, the DM guides as well as those player handouts. So very cool, very cool. Love to see those. And these are incredibly useful in-game. It's probably, I have to say... This stuff right here is some of the most useful stuff in my mind uh, when you get to in-game execution because being able to physically hand your players one of these handouts uh, is is amazing, right? Yeah, breaking the book down, okay, that's good. That, that makes a difference. Having the little character art handouts, that's a huge value. And like having everything just ready to go because, you know, what else do you do, right? You get online, you have to print it out, you got to make a, a digital version of like all the monsters and all the stats. Having all that stuff is incredibly useful, but these little handouts are just, it's awesome thematically, and it really does impress your players. It's always the same. Anytime I run a one-shot for for people and they and I'll use the things from these box sets, it's it's the same reaction every time when I bring out some type of handout and I set it down on the table and everybody's like... Oh, what's that? That looks special, right? Like it, it just it creates a it creates an environment that uh, is just awesome for your players. Okay, and it's even if you're someone who knows this and has used these box sets, it just always feels fresh, you know. But for those players that have never seen this stuff, it's it's always an awesome uh, it's always an awesome experience. Okay, here's the books. We're not going to get into the books. This is just how they do the books. They break down each one of these books into these little chapters. That does make it very nice from a DM perspective to just consume, you know, that, uh, that stuff. You see how I start to spread this out and just create this, like, visual interaction? It's awesome. All right, we are now hitting the DM screen, and I am loving the artwork that I'm seeing here. Got some bugbear, got some goblin. Let's see what we got. Oh, that is so good. Oh, that's great. Okay, that looks good. It's a little, it's dark. It's a little dark. Uh, it's a little dark in here, but uh, here's what you got with that DM screen. That is looking very cool. And then obviously on the other side, you're gonna ha you're gonna have Fandolin, the main city there. Um, and then you're going to have a bunch of different stats and statistics that you're going to be able to look at as a DM that is specific. And that's what's nice about these DM screens. It's specific to this adventure and the things that you're going to want to know. Okay, So you got your Fandolin region travel time, a um, bunch of like wave echo cave monsters, there's important NPCs, transformation of Fandolin, uh, as you as you kind of go in that city and things that happen as you to that city as you go through the adventure, this is just really cool. Really cool. You got your overview map that's over here on the side, which is going to be this right here. So that, you know, you're going to have your DM screen, your your plans. I'm also going to say I wonder if that's a little taller than it normally is. I don't have a tape measure uh, on me, but for some reason it feels like this is a little taller. I could be wrong, but I love the height that this D, that this DM screen is at. I'm a big fan of having a DM screen that is a little bit taller than those like really short like huge ones. I, I would prefer a three. I think that, you know this is a four panel, and it's a good four panel. But if you're gonna do a four panel, you got to make it taller. That's why a lot of times you'll see the taller ones are three panel. I am a fan of the taller DM screen because. You can kind of hide and put more stuff behind it. This looks real good. You can hide and put more stuff behind it, and that's why I like those. Okay, Here's where you're going to have your uh, character art items. So this is going to be the stuff that, you know, as you're playing the game. Man, there's a lot of stuff down here. So as you're playing, wow, oh, there's a lot of cool stuff down here. Some of it did kind of pop out of its little protective uh, foam, but it's perfectly fine. It's pretty hardcore stuff. These are going to be the little uh, things you're going to hang over your DM screen that your characters are going to see the artwork. And then on the back side, the DM is going to see all the stats. So this is your stat block. This is your artwork. If you have miniatures and you want to put those out, great. Uh, if you don't, then, then, then don't. Um, 
Now, here is, now this is interesting. So here is your little bag of miniatures. Speaking of miniatures, we're going to jump straight to this. I didn't know exactly how they were going to do this or how many would be included. So it looks like they popped all of them in this little baggie here, okay? Uh, which I think is fine. I'm looking for our little pieces to see if anything broke. It did not. So that's good. I think that's fine. There's only, there's one, two three oh and you got a couple of the little the couple of little mind uh, you got a mind flare and a couple of the little brain that's really cool i i love this little trilogy set up here uh another mind flare and another mind flare so it's it's pretty much a mind flare setup with a couple of these little guys and that's those are the miniatures that you're going to get in the box set now, it does have a little bag. It says D&D &D Mind Flayers um, on, on the bag here, and all of them will just go right in the baggie. Now, could they have... They do have some more space here uh, with foam on the insert, okay? So, could they have done a custom foam in, in just kind of one... Let's see if it would even fit. Two, three... No, it absolutely would have fit. So, they could have done that. They could have injected those little characters down into the foam. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take a little blade and I'm going to cut that foam out and I'm going to put I'm going to put mine right down into the foam versus putting them back in this little baggie. I think it's fine for shipping in this little baggie. These things are pretty tough. I, I you know, especially these models like they don't have any super delicate parts. They're pretty tough. They're not going to scratch or get like it's just not like that. They'll be fine in here, but I think from a presentation perspective, just for my own little custom setup, I am going to cut cut that out and sort of inject, you know, just kind of set those down in, because it's extra right here, just kind of set those down into that foam. Um, they may have thought about doing that, but like anything, that would have been a higher production cost to be able to do that versus putting it in the little bag and having it stored, you know, stored down in this little foam pocket here. So... It's perfectly protected. I, I'm not. I don't have a problem with how they did that. Okay, you do have a nice little red Beetle and Grimm's baggie in the bag. You will get your coin of completion, which is pretty cool. I'll definitely have this in the side by side cam as well. That Bear will do that work for us uh, secretly behind the scenes, and you will have your coin of completion, the Shattered Obelisk. That's really really cool. The way that that looks, and then on the other side, you do have a Goblin. That's really cool. They they did a good job with like how much detail is on this coin. I don't know. This coin may have more detail than some of the ones from the past. Like it's it's really lit up. I mean, it looks really cool. I'm a big fan of that coin. That is awesome. Okay. Here's our little box of magic item cards. So, this is something that they've added in uh to a number of uh, of sets and they are really high quality um like almost like uh um what's the word i'm looking for they're like they're, they're totally like a coated card almost like a laminated card that's what they feel like they're a really high quality uh thick coated card and you will have um you know what it is like magic item that's on that's on the front there just says magic item on the front of the card then on the back, uh, Empowered Mind Crystals. So here's like one of the magic items. They tell you exactly what it is. It gives you a little bit of artwork picture. They tell you what it's worth, uh, what it does, and whatnot. So these are these are really nice to have as you're playing the game and players do come about things. Versus having to, you know, what you would normally do, you'd, you'd hand them a little piece of paper that would have the item. You don't have to do that. You can just grab this little card, have it prepared if it's something that you know you want to present for that um, for that session, or it's just something that's supposed to be presented for that for that session. You can grab that little card, have it ready behind your DM screen, and then just hand it to the players when they're when they're ready. So that's that's a really cool uh, that's a really cool item. I, I I like that, and it makes kind of the flow of the game uh, even better because that's one of the things. I don't know if I've called this out in other uh, videos that I've done for Beetle and Grimm's is one of the benefits of having something like this, which is important, is to keep the flow of the game going, right? Whenever a DM has to stop and go fiddle with stuff, look stuff up, write stuff down, create stuff on the fly, it can sort of break the experience and the cycle of kind of what's going on. So the faster you can have those little items and things prepared, 
the better that flow and the experience of that game for the players will continue to be. So you can just grab it, here you go. They, they, they consume it, they talk amongst themselves, oh look how cool, right? And you're right on to the next thing without you fiddling and everybody sort of sitting there waiting for you as the DM to do something or to find something or pull up some stat block, right? It's just, that's where all these different tools come into play and just make that experience that much better. Wow, I love these little crystals that are embedded in this. This is sick. And they've got a number of them that are like that uh, this time. Okay. They put a number of uh, different uh, pins and emblems uh, in most of their boxes. This one's kind of lit up. There is five of them that are included, and they are absolutely fantastic. Wow. They get better and better with these things, and I will have to recommend, because this is the first time I've seen them really lit up with these little fake crystals sort of in, embedded in these as well. Please keep doing that because, wow, you got the bling rolling in these. And they are double pin metal back. Well done. Uh, not the little cheap uh, black plastic push. These are metal back clipped pins. Uh, so they'll stay nice and secure. Oh, man, this is cool. This one's almost got like a little, not like a crystal, but like a little glass gem. These are awesome. And they're sizable as well. Sometimes they're like half this size. These are big, chunky, and all of them are like this. Ooh, look at this one with the black, sort of that, uh, ah, that one's really cool. If you can see that on camera, look at that on the side-by-side. -side. That is so awesome. Team, these are these are nuts. I love these. Now, this one here is all, this one here is like an all-metal. It doesn't have any uh, little, little crystals or anything. I don't think it would need, other than they could have made maybe uh, on the, on the hilt here, this little bottom piece, maybe like a, like a crystal or something. I, I don't, I don't know if that would have added anything, but uh, this is actually a, a, an emblem from, from, so that's probably just keep it true to how it should be. But this one's really cool as well. Uh, and these can be things that are earned over the course of the campaign uh, and can be presented to the players. And how cool is it then, then, then a player starts to show up every week with, you know, one of these pins on or something, I mean, you could keep everything together, but I think it's cool to like present and then and then they kind of show up over the course of the campaign wearing their little emblem or their pin. That's special. That's pretty cool for a player. Uh, and then the DM obviously probably would want to collect those things back at the end of the game, or maybe they don't, right? I mean, to each their own. Maybe these are handed out, and then that's that's the end of it. You you own this now as a player. So that's pretty cool. That is everything that is in the box, and you can see there they've got a little foam insert that's custom made for the items that need to go back into the box and get stored nicely. So that's it, folks. That is the Beetle and Grimm's brand new Fandelver Legendary Box and all the things that you're going to get into the box. If this is something for you and you're interested, uh, I definitely would recommend checking it out. If you're interested and you're like, you know what, it looks cool, but I'm not sure, check out on the channel. There is a ton of other videos we've done on Beetle and Grimm's box sets. You can see almost every single one of them and how over the years they have consistently had a very, very high quality and they continue to make things better and better and better, or they continue to tweak things in specific ways to be more cost effective for the consumer. Okay. With that team, keep rolling them crits. It's been the McGuire Review and we'll see you next time.